we start with the Collingwood Football Club. Winless have their dramas, and now there's some news off-field, off Caro, which has complicated things even further tonight. Well, that's true. It was reported um, on AFL.com that Claire Pettifer, who joined the club, it must be said in a blaze of um, pride um, back in, I think it was less than 18 months ago, yep. to be Graham Wright's 2IC. Claire Pettifer, it's been reported, is going to the Melbourne Football Club. Now, Collingwood are framing this that Claire has been poached by Melbourne to go back in a senior media relations role, a senior executive role, a role that he was in fact offered almost two years ago by Gary Pert. I'm not sure that that is exactly what's happened here. Claire Pettifer, as I said, went to work with Graham Wright. They proudly announced her joining the club. L less than 18 months later, Claire Pettifer's ambition to work in a footy department has ended. And I don't think it's ended as well as it could have. And I don't think, in fact, Claire's relationship with everyone in the footy department was as good and productive as it could have been, specifically some coaches. And I think there's a level of disappointment in the way that maybe Claire was not encouraged as well as she could have been. Now, you might say, last week I said, we talked about Graham Wright's unusual, certainly revolutionary, really, decision for a footy boss to take a year off footy. He comes back, I think, on the 9th of September this year, when you would think Collingwood would be playing finals. Um, I thought that Brendan Bolton and Claire Pettifer, as his number two, would be sharing the footy role, but it, I was wrong. It's actually Brendan Bolton and um, Bre Justin Lepich. But they're both yeah. sharing that role, are they? Well, Justin Lepich, I think, is having more to do with list management, whereas Brendan Bolton is having more to do with the operational footy performance. Now, I don't know whether everything is united as, united as it could be within the football department. Certainly the departure of Claire has seen a level of disappointment from some Did women's staff at the club who have called... I mean, look, I'm not going to say there's a woman problem at Collingwood. I cannot say that by any means. I mean, Nadine Reb Rabba is one of their most senior executives. But last year, Craig Kelly, we know, had trouble with his AFLW players and there was a bit of a, a tense moment there where he had a real crack at them. And I just think it's wrong to portray this as Melbourne being in a, in a bit of a PR wilderness at the moment with all the problems they've had poaching Claire Petter for back. I don't think that is what happened and I don't think everything has been hunky-dory. So do you think that there's confusion over who's running that football department now? Oh, no, I can't say that. I won't say that. But I do think it's going to be interesting to see how everything shapes up. And, you know, Matthew, um, well, let's have a listen to what the coach said after the club's second bad loss over the weekend. I'm reading books about, about things that you need to do to, to repeat things. And, and um, we're not standing still here. And there's a lot of time to go, which gives us great belief and comfort. And, and then, but reality is a lot of hard, hard work to, in the coming days. So Craig McRae is saying we're not standing still. We have to change things. What, what's your reading of that? There's no doubt you have to evolve and you can't just sit on your hands and think that everything can just roll on as you do. But you can also change too much. You can try and reinvent the wheel. And I think in Collingwood's situation, they've made too much change. So here is what got them a premiership. So Brendan Bolton was the backs coach. He becomes the director of co. I think it's a massive thing that Graham Wright's done. And maybe they should have just said, OK, Graham, we're going to find the next best football boss in the land. If you need to leave during a footy season, your job's not there when you come back. That's probably the way I would go with it uh, in that situation. Justin Lepich, forwards coach, knows his footy back to front, director of football. It's had strategy. a ripple effect, doesn't it? Yeah, so Salwood becomes the forward coach. Jordan Ruffhead, a lot more inexperienced than Brendan, becomes the backs coach. You know, Hayden Skipworth stays in a similar role and Graham Wright's not there. So I think sometimes you can have too much change and that may well be the case because players want consistency. A coach learns players, how they respond well to feedback, how they play Kane, and then next minute they're gone, you're having to learn it with a new coach. There's a balance, isn't there? Yeah, I yeah. mean, because Geelong do like to change up their yeah. footy department as well, and they're, they're big on, on change and keeping people refreshed. But you're right, when you've got something that works, there's nothing wrong with sticking to that. They wouldn't have thought they'd be none and two. LB, it's a tough draw to start with against the two best teams. Uh, Justin, to this point of the season, Justin Lepich was asked about the... Well, the narrative that they've been reflecting too much on 2023. It is very different, and I think it's different in every club. Well, Richmond didn't probably, they didn't have a documentary, and I wasn't there that long ago. And one thing I do agree, there is a certain point you've got to turn to the future, whatever moment that is. It's definitely from at least a week ago. You know, sometimes uh, these things can linger on a little further. I wonder if there's just a, just a little bit of awkwardness or a bit of self-consciousness about Collingwood. There's not a whole 
critical no, mass why? of the Magpie Army that's going to be there at 6.16. Why do you think that? Well, I hope it's not that they're starting to feel awkward about still looking like they're celebrating. They must be so sick of people talking about their over-celebrating, but in the lead-up to last week's game, Matthew, it was all about the dynasty that Collingwood would become. And they are a powerhouse and they deserve to celebrate, but they need to win now. Yeah. And they've got some issues all over the place at the moment. It's early days in the season. Uh, in the forward line, Ash Johnson hasn't worked. Defensively, they've got some issues as well. Is it time to perhaps change things up a little bit? Do they need to find they only had 10 goals on the weekend? Is it, is it someone like a Darcy Moore that could go forward just to get them into the in the games yeah. a little bit earlier. Actually, they've got problems at either end. Nathan Murphy's a massive loss, so I think you could throw Darcy Moore forward. You know, we've seen him do it a long, long time ago. I doubt they'll do it because they probably haven't... Howe seems to be the one that goes forward. But they've, have they worked him out, Kane? Mm. Is he having too many goals kicked on him yeah, now? Well, just think in the one breath you've just said, you've got something that works, let's not reinvent yeah. the wheel. So this is an all-Australian premiership captain that we all lauded last year for his attacking play. So with their backline issues, I think that's the wrong move to send him forward. He just needs to play better. He needs to be more accountable. Go and watch some Sam Taylor tape. And you need to evolve yourself and get better and lead this footy club out of it because their backline's been disappointed. They're not the only department, but to then suggest after they've changed everything up to chuck him forward would be a mistake. It's not too early to ask whether Taylor Adams has picked the wrong club too. Like He, he would probably be playing sooner, I think, in his Collingwood midfield now than he necessarily is going to be in Sydney. It's given that, it, and albeit there's some injuries that are a bit longer than his, but Callum Mills has got to come back in, Luke Park has got to come back in. That bat's deep. Yeah, I mean, and Jordan's he, got his spot. He, he may have Hutchie, but he would go, OK, we're in a good position at Sydney. We feel like we're going to be there at the business end, but how they fit Mills, Rowbottom and Adams is a discussion that they'll need to have. Not to say there might be injuries that bob up, and he'd just think, I need to be at my best in September. So if Sydney are in a position to win it, I'm in that team.